Somebody say amen. amen. I'm glad to see all of you. And the other half of you that didn't make it, we'll see that we're, we're waiting. They're going to get here in about 30 minutes. So don't look back whenever they come in. They're going to be embarrassed already. So, so uh, I am glad that you're here. You know, I was thinking about a dream I used to have when I was a little kid. I had a very, I have, I have a very vivid imagination and got me in a lot of trouble sometimes when I was small. One of my favorite dreams that I used to have was the one where I could fly. Anybody ever have that dream where you could fly? Man, that's, that's a free feeling, isn't it? You know, my favorite flying dream was the one that I would have, and I had it more than once, where that I would be flying around the classroom at school. For some reason, I'd gotten in trouble, and the teacher was getting on to me, and I just took to wings. And uh, I would fly over the class, and she would take her paddle, and she would stand there and jump and swing at me with her paddle. And I would dodge her, and I'd, I would dip, and I'd fly up and high, and I'd wave, and all the kids are cheering and clapping, you know, because this was the coolest thing they'd ever seen. And uh, I, ju I just love that dream, you know. Poor teacher, I feel bad for her now in my dream. Of course, she doesn't even exist in reality, but... There, I had a lot of teachers that felt the way that she did, I'm sure, but, um, but yeah, in that dream, man, I was free, you know, and I had the big smile on my face, and I'm, and I'm just dipping and flying and moving and going. It was just such an amazing thing. If somebody were to, if somebody were to offer me wings right now, and it was safe, right? I mean, it's, it's tested, and it was safe. I, I would love for somebody to give me a set of wings that that I could be sure of wouldn't fail me. I would love to be able to fly. Anybody else like that? The idea of just being able to, to put my wings on and the freedom of just being able to leave everything below me, right? Like I, I would fly over all the traffic, somebody say amen. I'd fly over all the traffic. I'd fly over all the danger. I'd fly over all the problems. I would, just, I would just take the flight. I would probably fly all the time. You know, uh, I think I might be able to make it if I was a, if I was a fast flyer, which I'd want to be. I'd want the fast wings. And if I was a fast flyer, I'd save a lot on gas because I wouldn't even drive my car to church. I would just fly. And I would laugh at everybody else that's out there on the bypass as I was flying over them. Somebody say amen. I mean, all the way from here to Tawny Town, you'd look up, you'd see this little speck, and it'd be me, and I'd be waving. And people would be cheering and clapping, and the policemen would be waving. Their, they're trying to beat me with their, uh, they don't have paddles, but uh, they, they'd all be trying to give me a speeding ticket. I would speed if I could fly, I guarantee you. I would love the idea of being able to fly. I would love to have wings. Would you? No? Just me? So the topic t we're talking about today is... It's called Sink Into Your Wings. And it has gotten my attention because I've always been interested in having the ability to fly, to have wings. Uh, hopefully this is going to get your attention too. You know, we're in, the, we're in the middle of a series. And those of you that missed the couple, first couple of weeks, it's okay. You could go to our website, go down, click down where it says uh, watch a sermon. And the, the messages are all there. If you've, if you've gotten behind, you haven't gotten to hear what this is all about, and maybe you might not care. When this is over with today, you'll be like, well, I'm glad I only heard one. I know. Thankful I wasn't here for the other one so far. But uh, if this piques your interest and you're thinking to yourself, well, I would really like to have the basis of all that. I'd like to know what's going on. You could go back and you can watch. This is a series called The Soldier Who Always Wins. And this is the fourth week. The, this is coming from Ephesians chapter 6. Talking about putting on the whole armor of God. So we're looking at 10 verses 10 through 18. Um, the first week that we talked about this, we, we took those first three verses and we broke them down. And we talked about how that the battle is coming. We talked about an enemy that is very real. Uh, those of you that think spiritual warfare is silly, uh, you are probably getting beat up a lot when you wouldn't need to be. Just because you're not acknowledging that there's an enemy that actually exists. So we talked about the battle is coming. Then we got into uh, verse 13. And we talked about how we have to get ready for the day. The battle's coming. That, that verse talks about the evil day. And we broke down what the evil day was. We said the battle's coming. You better get ready for the day. And then last week we talked about what is 
the, 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 at the core of all of the armor of God, uh, the most crucial, perhaps, though even least seen, portion of the armor is the belt of truth. We discussed the importance of the belt. And, and I hate that, that if you didn't hear that, I hate that you missed it. You should, you should probably go back. Uh, I would advise it, not just because it's me, because I didn't write this. But you would go back and listen and hear about the, 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 the belt of truth. And we learned last week that the belt of truth, when it is cinched up tightly around our core, it does many things, many, many things. Uh, just not just strengthening our core, but it's also protecting an area of our body that the breastplate will not. And so uh, we, we learned that all the weapons hang off of that belt. But we found out that the belt is the belt of truth. And we found out who the truth was. The scripture teaches us that the truth is who? It's Jesus. Jesus is the truth. So when Jesus has a central place at the core of our life, then all the rest of the armor that we are going to, to be using is going to work off of that and from that central place. We talked about the importance of the word of God. How important is the word of God in your life? How you must be self-feeding, not just being spoon-fed by someone once a week. But you need to be feeding yourself every single day in the word. So here's where we are today. We've, we've decided that, that according to scripture we have to put on the whole armor that God has provided. We can't just put on bits and pieces because bits and the, the, the very thing that we don't put on is where we're going to be in trouble. Started with the belt because without the belt we couldn't carry all the rest of it. A, a lot of it originates from the belt. I'm just going to go ahead and switch, Josh. I don't like the way this mic is doing. So uh, let's just go ahead and switch that. Um, everything coming from that belt. And so today we're putting on the whole armor. Once we have the belt on, once we have it cinched up, now we're going to put on the breastplate. Now, depending on where you research this from, you would, you would find uh, varying opinions about the breastplate. There are some who say, and it makes a great message. I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, condemn them for this. But there are some who say that the breastplate only covered the front. And the message is very spiritual, but it goes something like this. The breastplate only covered the front because we're never to turn our back to the enemy. And so there's nothing to guard us in the back. Uh, that the soldier's armor was all in the front. But I am about to kind of blow that up. So I, for any of you that that was a message that really got you charged up and, and really changed your life, I'm not trying to destroy that for you. But I believe after doing a little bit of research that this is not just a front breastplate. In fact, uh, we're going to show you here in just a minute on the screen what it looked like. But there's a fellow named Adam Clark and he writes on the subject and he said the breastplate consisted of two parts called wings. So you can see that when he lifts this, let me give him just a second. When he lifts this up, it has straps in the front and the back. The back ones are together, the front ones are not. And so when he picks it up, he's going to spread that out. And then you're going to see, see there what that looks like? Now when he lifts this, it looks like he is putting on what? It looks like he's putting on his wings. So hang on for a second. Adam Clark said the breastplate consisted of two parts called wings. One covered the whole region of the thorax or the breast in which the principal uh, viscera of life are contained and the other covered the back as far down as the front part extended so the front and the back were tied together but before it went on it looked like wings now I want you to look at the text with me if you would uh, there in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 14 this is modern King James version says therefore stand and here it is this was last week having your loins girded about with the truth that's the belt of truth we talked about Today, we're just going to talk about the last half of verse 14. Some of you are like, oh, wow, that means this is really going to be a short message, right? Let's break it down. It probably won't be too long, but let's break it down. Let's talk about the second part of this verse. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Each week, we've done word studies. Every week, we've walked through here so you would understand what's going on in each one of these words. So let me break it down for you. Starting in the middle of the verse. Talking about the breastplate. It says, and having on. Having on. Okay, this is interesting. You ready for this? Having on means to sink into a garment. All right? So, 
the soldier would sink into what? His wings. That's why we're tiling this, sink into your wings. So he would sink into the garment. Then it says, so we have having on next the breastplate. Now the breastplate was heavy armor that covered the body front and back, neck to thighs. Uh, remember, like we said, the belt covers the stomach and the lower abdomen, but the breastplate covers all the rest of the vital organs. So it says, having on the breastplate, and then the last words, of righteousness. What does righteousness mean? If you go back into the Old Testament, you, ser- uh, you search out righteousness. The Hebrew word there meant just right or virtuous. But those of you that are ahead of me would say, yeah, but we're in the New Testament. So what does the word mean in the Greek? The word in the Greek here means justification. There's a lot of other words that can be used, though, uh, that to describe what is being said here, all right? Words like integrity or holiness, purity of life, sincerity. Basically, here's what it means. You ready for this? Let me give you the, 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 the high-term definition for what it means to be righteous. You ready? Righteousness means to be right, do right, live right, think right. Not wrong. So it is right, not wrong. Righteousness is right up. Right on. For those of you from the 70s. Everything that is right side up. We don't have the ability in ourselves to be or do or think or live right, do we? Does anybody here have the ability to be right without some help? Uh, If you did, then Pastor Kyle would not have wasted the last five or ten minutes up here trying to encourage you, uh, for those of you that aren't able to figure out how to do right on your own. Am I right so far? So we don't have the ability in ourselves to be right, think right, do right, live right. We don't have that ability. If we were told to be righteous on our own, we have been set up for ultimate failure because we cannot achieve righteousness of ourselves. So what are we going to do? Well, we found out that only the truth can set us free from sin. Who's the truth? There you go. Jesus told those who believed upon him in John 8 and 32. You ready for this? And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You shall know Jesus the truth of all things that are right and holy, and he will make you free. You won't be able to do it yourself, but because you know him, he will set you free. So Jesus, the truth, has set us free to live righteous lives. Now, i got to give you something else that's an interesting note to me. And, and you, you, you get this, you got to kind of dig around to get this, but I, I want to share this with you, okay? There's another... Another thing about the breastplate that I think is that I really think is interesting has doesn't have much to do with where we're going, but it, but I got to share it with you. The breastplate, when it was put on the soldier, rested on and was attached to the belt. Okay, so we remember from last week that the reason it was attached to the belt was because the wings would flap around in the wind if they weren't attached. When he's trying to run, when he's mobile, the wings would flap around so they are attached. So we understand the attachment to the belt, but what about this resting on? I want you to see this. The only way that we can live righteous is when our breastplate is resting on the belt of truth, which is Jesus. Hang on just a second. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 says, He, being Jesus himself, bore our sins bore the weight of our sins. Are you still with me? He himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that dying to sins we might live to righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Understand this. When Jesus was on the cross, he was bearing the weight all of the sin of all of mankind. Thereby, Jesus the core took the weight off the shoulders of the people who were trying to carry righteousness as a breastplate. Isn't that cool? Jesus is the belt of truth, and because he's the belt of truth, it is now possible for us to do what 1 Peter 2.24 said. He said, 
for us to live to righteousness. We could not live to righteousness if it were not for Jesus the truth. He is the belt at our core which the rest of our righteousness is attached to and is resting upon. So what does the breastplate do? I want to spend a few minutes encouraging you to utilize the breastplate to its fullest extent. You desperately need it working for you. I'm about to tell you why. Get your pen and your paper. You ready? Here we go. You have to have the breastplate because you have to guard your heart. It covers, the breastplate covers the vital organs. Here to here. Front and back. Tied together. Synced up. Attached to. Resting on. We got to have this working together because we need to guard our heart. Some of you are experiencing spiritual heart disease. Some of you are suffering spiritual heart attacks. Am I right? Where the enemy has found a way to get past that breastplate because one point or another in your life you didn't have it on. The moment that you didn't have it on, an arrow got through and has gotten to your heart. Now, what is your heart? I'm not talking about your physical heart that's pumping your blood. Now I'm talking about what the scripture refers to as the heart being. Are you ready for this? The heart is the place in scripture where your thoughts and your feelings and your desires originate. It's the major battleground for your soul. Your heart is number one. He said, I thought it was my mind. Well, it can be your mind as well. But how many of you all know that usually when you fail matters of the heart, it's because you weren't using your mind. Had the heart been protected, had it never gone from the heart to the head, you probably would have been okay. Maybe, I don't know why, maybe that's why Paul mentions this before the helmet. I don't know. I couldn't figure that one out. I was like, man, you think, I think you'd want to protect your head. But if you didn't have a heart, it wouldn't matter if you had a head. The enemy is always going to go for the place where you imagine things. Whatever that looks like for you. That's, that can be a different thing for everyone. But he, what he's doing is he is he's trying. Because remember, we learned this from a couple of weeks ago. He is militarily organized. He and all of the hordes of hell. So that they know exactly where your weakness is. And they will attack you in that place. Right? So whatever that place is for you where you struggle. Think about it for just a moment. Where's the place where you normally struggle the most? Think about it for a minute. Now, whatever imaginations you allow that place to have. So for some of you, that can be things like. It could be lust. For some of you, it could be things like, man, I like to gamble. For some of you, I like to gossip. For Whatever it might be, your imagination makes that look and sound better than in reality it really is. Am I right? Any of, any, any of you ever uh, decided to follow your heart into the bar and drink a few too many? Huh? This is what we're talking about. Because your imagination said, oh, it won't be that bad. I'm not like all those drunks. I can handle my liquor. I'm only going to drink one. Right? I'm not like all those weak people in there that can't control their, their business. That's an imagination. See, that's an imagination. That's the devil working on your imagination. And also, uh, here's what else happens in that when, he, when he attacks the heart. It's through imaginations. It's through fantasy. Have you ever noticed that some of the things that, that in your sinful thoughts look so good in reality really are not? Huh? So he works through the areas of imagination, through fantasy, and through conjuring up ideal ideas or carnal desires. He will tempt you through the imagination or through fantasy or through whatever that might be. But he will tempt you to doubt To worry, to lust, to fear, or to commit sin. He will do that by attacking you through the imagination, through the fantasy, through the conjuring. He will do these things to you. So you say, man, I've really, I've been recently, I don't know why, Pastor, I'm living for the Lord, but recently I've just been, I've just really been afraid of something. Let me tell you why. 
The devil knows that fear is it for you. And so he has figured out how to attack you in your mind. So you're imagining and fantasizing about things that aren't even true. I'm afraid I'm going to get the coronavirus. Right? And when, it, when we're done with the coronavirus, then we're going to have to watch out for the Bud Light virus. And then the Jack Daniel virus. See, well, you shouldn't make fun of that kind of stuff, Pastor. People are dying. I know people are dying. They've died with the swine flu, too. Died with every kind of plague known to man that's come along since the time we've been on the planet. There's always something. There's always something else coming. Why? Because the devil likes to keep us afraid. So some of y'all's imaginations are already going crazy. You're like, I, I, well, they don't have any cases of it in Arkansas so far yet but, but, that I've heard about, but I know it's coming, so I'm just going to quit my job. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to shut up myself in my house and I'm never coming out. And I'm never going to touch another human being as long as I live. And I'm never going back to another restaurant. And from now on I'm just going to sit right here and, and hope to live until I die. So he can find that place in your heart, that in your mind, the place of imagination or fantasy or conjuring. And say, okay, they worry. They fear. They doubt. I will attack them there. What are we going to do about it? Psalm 119 verse 9 says, With what shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With all my what? With all my heart I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. I have hidden your word in my heart so that I might not sin against you. Why are we guarding our heart? Because we're guarding our heart from a vain imaginations and everything else that the enemy would try to do to scare us. We are guarding our heart, but we can do so because when we hide the word of truth in our heart, then we don't sin against him. Good stuff, huh? So guard your heart. Sink into your wings. Make sure your heart is protected from the evil one. Second thing you got to do with this, with this breastplate of righteousness. First of all, you guard your heart. Secondly, save your breath. You got to save your breath. What else is in there beside the heart? Lungs. So we got to guard our heart. We got to save our breath. If your lungs are destroyed, you're not going to live. You have to protect your lungs from the enemy. Lungs are where the breath comes from. What are you breathing? Job chapter 27 verse 3. Job said, as long as my breath is in me and the spirit of God. Who's the spirit of God? Spirit of truth. Who's the spirit of truth? Spirit of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And, the, and then he said, I'm sending you the spirit of truth. So we got Jesus the truth. We got the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, the spirit of the truth. So he says, as long as my breath is in me and the spirit of God is in my nostrils, my lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. Anybody here ever had the breath knocked out of you? Raise your hand if you've had your breath knocked out of you. Hey, let me tell you something about that. I, I've had that happen as well. And, you know, your opponent can be someone that, that on nine out of ten times you could whip them. But if they sneak that, run, that, they sneak that one in to your bread basket, into your ribs, into your stomach, and knock the breath out of you, you're whipped. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever seen anybody that, that, that see some people get in a fight? I wanted to tell a story, but I, 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 again, about my childhood. But I feel the Holy Spirit convict me like, you don't need to tell them kind of stories. People don't need to know you did that kind of stuff. But, um, but I have seen what it does when you knock the breath out of somebody. And how the people will gather around him and say, you killed him. He's dead. But if you hang on a minute. Eventually they will start, uh, uh, and they'll, uh, then they'll get their breath back, and then eventually they'll get up and go home. But the whole while that the breath is knocked out of them, regardless of how big or how mean they are, all they're thinking is, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I quit. Hank, hit somebody else. Right? Has that ever happened to you? 
it is a panicky feeling because it's, this has happened to me as well. I've had the breath knocked out of me and I felt like I was suffocating. I thought I'm never going to breathe again. Like how long can a person go without being able to breathe? And you, you, you just, uh, 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 you know, nothing's happening. It's a terrible thing. It's frightening to have the breath knocked, knocked out of you. And when it happens, I'm telling you, the only people that I know of that are able to deal with this are seasoned veterans who are warriors and they fight for a living. Some of them can recognize what to do in a situation like that and, and I guess, and cover up and keep themselves from getting killed until they get their breath back and they don't panic like the rest of us who aren't used to having it happen to us. But most people on the planet, when they get the breath knocked out of them, they are done. Am I right? They're done. We might fight again on another day, but we're done today. I'm not worried about whipping you right now. I just want to breathe again. Now, understand what's going on with the breastplate. If the devil gets one in there and takes your breath, if he can knock the breath out of you, that's a terrible thing. Don't let the enemy catch you without your breastplate, because if he does... He's going to knock the breath out of you. And if you've had the breath knocked out of you, you know what it feels like in the spiritual realm. In the physical, it's one thing. It's just as panicky feeling in the spiritual realm. That's the moment when, when you got hit and it hurt and all of a sudden everybody knows you're whipped. It's not like the time that you took a lick and, and you were able to keep on going and nobody knew about it. But when you get hit like this. You can't recover quickly enough for people around you not to know you got whipped. You got whipped. You're whipped. You're not, you're not whipped for life, but you're whipped right now. Don't let the enemy take your breath. And number three, you got to keep it on because you got to watch your back. You got to watch your back. How the devil loves to sneak up on us from behind. When you're living as right as you can, when you're walking in the spirit, when you're living in the word, when you're in prayer and fellowship and doing everything right, that's when he's going to attack you from the back. Now understand something about the devil. When you don't have the breastplate on, he'll just attack you from the front. Because it's easy. I mean, you're easy pickings. You think this is a, this, we talked about the, the enemy and the hordes of hell who he has, he has militarily organized. These guys are trained to know when you're weak and to know how to attack you. If they don't have to sneak around behind you, they won't. If, you're, if, if you don't have the breastplate on and, you don't, and you're not covered in the whole armor, they're like, why are we going to waste our time and energy back there? We'll just take them out from the front. But this is talking about the one who's doing everything right and one gets snuck in from behind. This is the person who is living in faith on a spiritual high, walking with the Lord. You're asking me, say, I, man, these are the best days I've ever had with Jesus. Everything is so good, right? Are you with me? Because we're not always like that. We're kind of up and down. But this, So let's go, go with me down this road for a minute at the end of it. We're talking about an individual who right now, at this point in their life, man, I mean, everything is great. I'm living for the Lord. Everything is good. Everything's, uh, we're happy. We're, the Lord's blessing us. And la, 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 la. And then they go to the doctor. And the doctor says, hey, wait a minute. That's having one snuck in from the back. When you say, well, wait a minute, Lord. I, I, I understood when I was living in sin that I had to deal with the repercussions of my actions. But this time I'm, I'm, I'm living holy and upright. I mean, I'm doing the very best I can do. Where did that come from? Has anybody ever been there? Seriously. I'm doing the very best I can do. Where did that come from? The doctor said what? The banker said what? The boss said what? They're letting me go? I, I thought I was the best employee they had. What are we, what's going on here? I've been praying. I've been fasting. I've been hearing the word of the Lord. I've been hearing from God. He's been using me in the gifts of the Spirit. Is you telling me I got what? Still with me? The breastplate 
guards spots that you can't even see. Job chapter 1 verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz or Uz or wasn't from around here. Whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. And he was the one who feared God and turned aside from evil. You keep on reading that. And God bragged on him. God was like, hey devil, have you ever, have you ever noticed my boy Job? And the devil's like, yeah, let me have at him a minute. And God said, well, don't kill him. You touch him, but don't you kill him. He's mine. Don't you think Job must have had one of these moments where God himself was telling the devil, Job is perfect. And then they come in and they say, hey, Job, all your kids are dead. Hey, Job, all your property's jacked up. Hey, Job, all your animals are dead. Hey, Job, your whole life is jacked up. Hey, Job, you got boils and you look like you're going to die. And Job's like, what is going on? What a vicious, merciless attack from the devil. Now understand, I want you to hear this sentence. This did not happen because of sin in his life. It happened because there was no sin in his life. Wow. You better watch your back. Jesus said in Mark 14 verse 38. You ready for this? Jesus said, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation truly the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak what am I going to do Lord I'm going to watch and pray he's still going to get one in every once in a while well he might he might he might but it'll only be because the Lord allowed it if I got the breastplate on there's no way the enemy can attack me He cannot get to my heart. He can't get to my lungs. He can't get to my back. He cannot do it. There's no way he can if I've got it on. I keep it on. I'm wearing it. I'm living in it. No way he can get to me. Only way that it could happen is if the the Lord allows it for a test. It's the safest insurance policy you could ever have in life. Is having on the whole armor of God. This breastplate is important, isn't it? got to keep the belt cinched up tight. you got to keep the spiritual organs protected from the enemy by sinking into your wings. I'll tell you one more story that will be done. 1934, you history buffs. King Alexander, Yugoslavia. He's visiting France for an official visit. He's on his warship and he is putting on his... It was, a, it was the uniform of an admiral, the Navy. So he's on the ship and he's putting on his uniform and it came time to put on his bulletproof vest and he could not get his tunic on over it to fit properly. So he decided to just not wear the bulletproof vest. He gets off the ship into the protection of the car that takes him to the dock or from the dock on over to where he's going for this meeting. And within just a few minutes time, an assassin shot him in the chest And he was dead. You can look that up if you want to. One of the first assassinations that was ever caught on film. Didn't have to happen. One person has speculated. I don't know if this is fair or not. But it sure does make a good point. His speculation is this. He was more interested in looking good than in being good. Some of us like, man, that breastplate just don't wha- it don't match my outfit today. It does not match the outfit I was going to wear today. Just for today, I will lay it down and we'll pick it back up and wear it tomorrow because today is Saturday. Sunday's a good day to wear the breastplate. It just fits because everybody else has got theirs on. We all look good wearing our breastplates. I'll tell you something. You leave it off on Friday, if you leave it off on Saturday, you might get to Sunday in a far different condition. You better get that breastplate on, you better keep it on. What does it mean? The breastplate of rightness. 
righteousness. Get on the breastplate of rightness and keep it on and stay ready because you're going to get you're going to get the chance. I use that word. You're going to get the chance to defeat the enemy over and over and over in your life. That's why you keep it on because it's not just a one-time battle. You're going to battle him all the way to heaven. But with the armor of God, you're going to keep whipping him all the way to heaven. He'll never learn. He'll never stop. But you just get to keep whipping him over and over and over and over again. Only if you have on the whole armor of God. Otherwise, you keep getting the breath knocked out of you over and over and over again. So we're going to spend a few minutes in prayer. Here's what I want you to come to grips with in your own spiritual life as you, this is what we've been doing the last couple of weeks and we've been taking this moment to just let the Holy Ghost run a spiritual check on us. Ask yourself right now, are you having trouble with your heart? Anybody here having heart trouble? What's that mean? Pastor, I'm being tempted to sin. I'm struggling right now. I am being tempted to sin. I'm having a hard time guarding my heart. I, I, I am, my imagination, my fantasy, all of these things are being conjured up in me. I am worrying, I'm doubting, I'm fearing, I'm lusting, I'm sinning, I'm struggling. I'm telling you, Pastor, I need help because I am not doing a good job of guarding my heart right now. I need to get the breastplate on. So that's question number one. Are you guarding your heart? Number two, are you out of breath? Anybody here out of breath this morning? They're just like, I'm just hanging on. I'm just, give me a minute. Give me a minute. I, I'm down here because I fail again. I got whipped again, but give me a minute. Just give me a Y'all go ahead and sing. Y'all go ahead and pray. Y'all go ahead and worship. Y'all go ahead and shout. Y'all go ahead and have victory. I'll get up in a minute. Right now, I'm still down here because I got the breath kicked out of me. Are you the person that's saying, I've had the breath knocked out of me? I'm struggling right now. I, I feel defeated right now. I've been knocked down. Number three, are you the person that's dealing with a backache? Anybody got a backache? Hate it when my back hurts. What happened? Man, I got blindsided when I thought everything was well. That's who has a backache today. People with a backache, spiritual backache, are the ones that got blindsided when they thought everything was right, everything was well, everything was going good. And then something happened this week, last week. Or for some of you, God forbid, tomorrow. And I thought I was doing well. So there they are. Pastor, I'm having a hard time guarding my heart. Number two, I've had the breath knocked out of me. Number three, I got a backache. Here's our moment this morning. Before we leave, we're going to make sure the belt is cinched and we're going to make sure we got the breastplate on and it's attached and it's resting on the belt before we leave the house. So whatever one of those three, if one or more, two or three or whatever they are, whatever it is for you, whatever's going on with you, during this last song, you sit there and you run through that, run through the gamut of those three things. Is it my heart? Is it my lungs? Is it my back? And let the Holy Spirit do a work in your life before you leave. Do not leave this room without sinking into your wings. Somebody say amen. So lead us in the song. Y'all right there where you're at. You can come to the altar if you'd like. It's open to you. However, this is easiest for you. If you want to take your notes and lay them in front of you, whatever's best for you, I want you just to take this few minutes and let the Holy Spirit do a work in your life. God bless you.